Hi everyone, Mrs. A here. Today we are going to sketch polynomial functions. Polynomial functions are really interesting functions. They are my favorite type of function um, because all of the characteristics we've learned all come together and have meaning into this beautiful um, rough sketch um, and, the, and it all connects in a beautiful way. So um, I have three different examples for us to sketch here today and they, these polynomials are degree three and degree four polynomials. If you're looking for a degree one polynomial or degree two polynomial which are linear and quadratic equations respectively then you should go look at some of the other videos I have on linear and quadratic functions um, because I'm not going to focus on those here. I'm going to focus on the higher degree polynomials. Before we can do our sketches with these polynomials, we need to know a lot of the characteristics that are within these equations and their meaning and how to interpret it onto a sketch of the graph. So I'm just going to put this aside for a, a minute and I'm going to uh, briefly review the characteristics of a polynomial function that we can see from that equation. Uh, if you need more explanation than this, because I'm going to do this kind of quickly, then I suggest you do a little more extra research on your own on, on end behaviors and on a multiplicity of zeros, uh, because we really need to know these things before we can sketch a polynomial function. And I'll say one more thing before I start. In order to sketch polynomial functions, they must have the equation in factored form. So it has to be completely factored and I'm not going to focus on any imaginary zeros in this video. So if you have a polynomial function that is in standard form, so it's not factored, then go take a look at one of my videos on factoring polynomials using the factor theorem and using polynomial long division so that you can get it down to factored form first um, because that would take a little bit more work than what we're going to do here today. So let's go back to these characteristics. First, we're going to talk about end behaviors. The end behaviors of a polynomial function are going to depend on whether the function has an even degree. So we're talking about the degree of the entire function, the entire polynomial, or an odd degree. And then we're going to combine that with the leading coefficient of the polynomial. That means the coefficient of the highest degree term in the polynomial, whether it's positive or whether it's negative. So when we combine these two characteristics, we can come up with the uh, end behaviors for any polynomial function. So if a function has an even degree and a positive leading coefficient, our end behaviors are both going to approach positive infinity. So that is as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. If we have an even degree polynomial with a negative leading coefficient, then the end behaviors are still going to go in the same direction, but they're going to flip over that x-axis. So we end up with both of them going to negative infinity, like this. If you have a polynomial function with an odd degree, then we're going to have end behaviors that do opposite behaviors. So with the even degree, they both went in the same direction. For an odd degree, they're going to go in opposite directions. If you have a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree, then our end behaviors will do this. Meaning, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. If the leading coefficient is negative and you have an odd degree polynomial, then this flips over. That's a vertical reflection. And now our end behaviors will be doing the opposite, which is something like this. So that's important to know for our sketching. Now let's talk about the multiplicity of zeros. So when you have a polynomial in factored form, you can pull out the zeros or the x-intercepts or you can call those roots of the equation and plot them on your graph. But the behavior that occurs at that zero is indicated by the multiplicity of the zero. And when we say multiplicity of the zero, 
we mean in that factored form here, the factor has a multiplicity. That's the degree of the individual factor within the equation. So in this equation, this factor has a degree of one. The multiplicity is one. This factor has a multiplicity of one. So the degree there is one. Down here in this example, this factor has a multiplicity of three because the degree on it is three. So let's talk about the behaviors that occur then. If you have a um, zero with a multiplicity of one, we often call this a linear zero or sometimes we call it a single zero. But either way, it, these, these all are synonyms for one, the number one. And when you have this as a sketch, on a graph, if this is your zero, then the behavior in that localized area is a straight line, or not exactly a straight line, but going straight through that zero. We can also go in this direction, straight through the zero. So it goes through that zero one time. If you have a zero of multiplicity two, then we call this a parabolic zero, or sometimes we call this a double zero. Either way, these words mean two. And when we see that, if you think about a parabola, if we have our zero right here, then the function is going to approach that zero, touch it, and bounce back. That creates like this mini parabola, that's the degree two, at the zero, that mini parabola. It can also happen below the x-axis like this. And the, the last one we're going to do, and we can keep going, but we're just going to do up to multiplicity of three today. This is what we call a cubic zero or a triple zero. Those words mean three. And when we have this kind of a multiplicity of three zero on the graph, there's my zero right there, we have the function going through that zero at an inflection point. And the Inflection point is when you have this kind of a shape happening. So it can happen that way or it can happen this way. So let's go back to the examples that we had for our sketches. And we're going to put all of this together now to do rough sketches. Um, if we want something a little more accurate, then we might have to start looking at um, finding individual points in order to increase the accuracy of our sketch. But today we're just going to look at end behaviors, zeros, and behavior of the function at those particular zeros. So let's start with this first one. It's factored f at x equals x times x minus four times x minus one. Here we have three different x-intercepts or zeros. The first one that we have is x equals zero, and that comes from that factor right there. This has a degree of one, so this makes it a linear zero. The next factor gives us a zero of positive four. And the degree on this factor is a one, so this zero is a linear zero also. And finally, this factor right here gives us a zero of x equals positive one. The degree here is one on that factor, so we have another linear zero. This means that at each of these three x-intercepts, our polynomial is going to pass through that point in a linear kind of fashion. Okay, let's look at the degree of this polynomial altogether. We will have an x times x times x here. So the degree of this polynomial will be three, which makes it an odd degree polynomial. And if we look at the leading coefficient of the function, we would have a one here on this x, a positive one here, and a positive one here. So when we multiply that all out and expand this, we would have a positive one as the leading coefficient, which makes this a positive leading coefficient. When we combine an odd degree 
with a positive leading coefficient, our end behaviors on the graph will do this. Remember when we, we did this over here on this page? Okay, now let's look at our zeros. So I have x equals zero, that's gonna go here. My scale here on these sketches will just be counting by ones. x equals four, and x equals positive one. So you see, if we combine these end behaviors with linear zeros at each of these, the only option is for our function to come from the negative direction up here like this, go straight through that zero, curve back, there's a turning point, come back through here, curve back up, there's another turning point, and go back up in this way. Now we're not taking into account a stretch here at all, so this is a very rough sketch, but this is all I'm going to look at for today. We could talk about a y-intercept here, but because we have a zero that is x equals zero, that is the y-intercept, so there's no, no more discussion on that y-intercept for this particular sketch. Okay, so when I talk about the shape of the curve, I could say that this curves up a little more like this, or it stretches down a bit more like this, but we're not going to pay attention to that for today because we're just doing rough sketches. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so here we have uh, f at x equals x squared times 3x minus 2 all squared. Here, let's pick out the zeros first. So this factor here gives us a zero at x equals 0. And that is what we call a double zero or a parabolic zero. And the reason for that is because we have an exponent of 2 on that factor. Then this factor right here gives us a zero at x equals positive two over three. We're just taking the root out of that factor there. And again, the degree on that factor is two, so this is a parabolic zero again. When we have parabolic zeros, that means at these two points, the sketch is going to touch that zero and then bounce back off to create a little mini parabola at that particular zero. So it's gonna happen twice here for this function. Okay, let's talk about the degree of this function. I have an x squared here. I would get an x squared here. When I mul multiply those two together, I would get an x to the power of four for the highest degree term. x to the power of four means we have an even degree polynomial here. Now let's look at the leading coefficient. The coefficient of this term would be a positive one, and the coefficient of this term, well, I have three x times three x, it would be nine, but a one times a nine is going to give us a positive leading coefficient again. So if we combine an even degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient, that means our end behaviors are both going to go up to the positive infinity direction, like this. Okay, now let's sketch in our uh, zeros. So I have one of the roots at x equals zero, and I have one at positive two over three. So this is gonna be really squished. I'm gonna put it right in there, do our best. And both of these are parabolic zeros, so if my end behavior is going to positive infinity in both directions. I need to come from the positive infinities, touch that, bounce back up, curve down, touch it again, and bounce back up. So this would look something like touch, touch again, like this. It's pretty squished, but that'll do. Again, the stretch of the curve here we're not going to think about. And when we talk about the y-intercept, because that zero was at um, x equals zero, the y-intercept is also at that origin. All right, let's do the last one. So for our last one, now we have f at x equals negative two times x minus three 
times x plus 1 cubed. We have two separate factors here. There's no x in front this time, so that's not a factor. This factor is going to give us a 0 of positive 3, and the exponent here is 1, so that's going to be a linear 0. This factor will give us a 0 of negative 1, and here the degree on that factor is 3. That makes this a cubic 0. That's going to give us the inflection point at that particular root. Here, we'll, we will have our function going straight through that um, zero. Okay, let's look at the degree of this polynomial. Here we have an x, and this is gonna multiply with an x cubed, which gives us x to the power of four. That means we have an even degree polynomial. Now let's look at the leading coefficient. A negative 2 times a positive 1 times a positive 1, because that's going to be 1 times 1 times 1, here is going to give us a negative 2. That gives us a negative leading coefficient. When we have a polynomial with an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, both of the end behaviors will go down into the negative infinity direction. Like this. They both go the same way. Okay, let's plot those zeros now. So my first zero is at positive three. And my next one is at negative one. Here. I have a linear zero here and a cubic zero here. So that means right here, it's gonna go straight through and it needs to go into the negative direction for the end behavior. So it's gonna go like this. And then here, um, it needs to also go in the negative direction, but I need to have an inflection point here. So if I need it to go in the negative direction and have an inflection point, I'm gonna curve this way and this way. There's my inflection point. And then I need to turn back down and go straight through that zero. So we have that inflection point here and we have a straight through there. Now. I didn't take into account my y-intercept, so let's go back and, and make this a little bit better. Uh, my y-intercept, if I plug in zero here and plug in zero here to find the y-intercept, we're left with negative two times negative three times positive one. That gives us positive six as a y-intercept. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Now you see how I'm a little bit off, so let's make this a little um, more stretched in the vertical direction. So here's my inflection point now. Up here, go up and curve back down. And now this sketch is a bit more perfected than the first one that we did. Let me just go over that here. Inflection point through the y-intercept. It's going to go up high. It's going to come back through that zero, and we have something like this. So we see lots of possibilities depending on the stretch of the um, polynomial function, that a value there, but that's a lesson for another day. So today we're just focusing only on the end behaviors and the zeros and the behavior of the zeros um, at, at that, uh, due to the multiplicity, sorry. So we see all those characteristics in the equation tell us what happens in the sketch of the polynomial. If you don't have a factored polynomial, you need to factor it first. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. This is A Loves Math.